What's going on guys, Ryan O'Toole back here again, giving you guys another ranking. With the release of Shazam, the seventh film in the DCU, it's time for me to do a different kind of video, like I did with the MCU last year leading up to Infinity War. I'm going to be giving you guys my ranking for all the DCEU villains from worst to best. What I did for this villain ranking is guys, I included villains not just the main villains, but the side villains that get involved with the action and are straight up evil and loyal to the main villain. I also debated back and forth if I should include Suicide Squad members in the Heroes ranking or the Villains ranking. And I decided to include the Suicide Squad in the Villains ranking because the Suicide Squad are villains. Come on. Let me know your ranking for all the DCU villains in the comment section down below. Tell me what you guys think of my list. I'll tell you what I think of your list. Let's have a great discussion back and forth. No spoilers for Shazam. That's all I'll say. And Keep in mind, guys, this is completely subjective. These are just my personal opinions. All film is subjective here on YouTube. This is just what I think, and please respect that. Without further ado, let's get to number 19. Coming in at number 19 is going to be Incubus from Suicide Squad. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, who the hell is this guy? Well, this is Enchantress's brother in Suicide Squad, that big gold CGI looking thing. All I remember about that character is that he shows up in the final act, he's Enchantress's brother, and basically he's there to wipe out our heroes, which are technically the Suicide Squad. So yeah, he does really nothing rememberable at all, he really doesn't say any dialogue at all, he just beats people up. And that's the main reason why he's my number 19. At number 18 is Enchantress, also from Suicide Squad. <laughs> Out of all the main villains, Enchantress is definitely the worst villain in the series. Cara Delevingne, she is a model actress, and she's really terrible in this movie. Suicide Squad is a bad movie all around, and Enchantress is an awful villain. This villain is so forgettable, so generic. She basically wants to take over the city and take over the world and all that. She makes these hula dances that are just like, what the hell? Cara Delevingne is awful in this movie and the character of Enchantress serve no purpose in existing in Suicide Squad. Coming in at number 17 is gonna be Steppenwolf from Justice League. When people found out that he was gonna be the main villain in Justice League Part 1, a lot of people were pissed they wanted to see Darkseid. Well, Darkseid hasn't happened yet. This is one of my worst comic book movie superhero villains of all time, along with Enchantress. This character is so generic, so cliche, and so bad. He's basically Thanos for the DCEU. He's a really dull version of Thanos. He basically wants to bring balance kind of to the universe by collecting the mother boxes and bringing unity together. That's really generic and sloppy. Steppenwolf is on the same level with Malekith. Just a cliche villain that you don't care about his motivation at all. This is the last of the forgettable villains. Number 16 is Slipknot from Suicide Squad. This is one of the members of the Suicide Squad. Another character I don't remember anything about. Slipknot is Hawkeye for the Avengers. Like, you don't know a single thing about him. Slipknot's just one of those people that are part of the Suicide Squad, but you don't pay attention to him because you pay attention to Harley Quinn and Deadshot and all of them. So yeah, I really have nothing to say about him, just he's there. Coming in at number 15 is Doomsday from Batman v Superman. Doomsday is the icon of the Superman villains. Like, this is the villain that kills Superman. The way Doomsday is introduced in this movie, it's very cartoonish. Doomsday doesn't even look like the character at all from the comic books. It looks pretty much like one of those dwarf guys you see in the Lord of the Rings movies, giant monster creatures, and also Abomination and all that. And Doomsday shows up in the final act of BVS and he fights all our heroes and it's just stupid. The Doomsday part was so unnecessary. At number 14 is Lex Luthor, played by Jesse Eisenberg in BVS. When I found out he was cast as Lex Luthor, I rolled my eyes like, this is a role I don't picture Jesse Eisenberg in at all. We saw the trailers, we heard Jesse Eisenberg's voice as Lex Luthor, and it sounded very much like the Riddler from Batman Forever. A very over-the-top villain who just makes all these assumptions and dialogue that goes, you know, God knows what Superman is. I know what Superman is. He's a great actor on all the social network. 
but here he is awful. Lex Luthor is just not good at all. Jesse Eisberg is not good. He wasn't given proper direction or a good script. At number 13 is Killer Croc from Suicide Squad. Uh, getting all into the Suicide Squad members, Killer Croc had a cool design to him. I love the practical design, the makeup on Killer Croc. And I loved the action sequences that Killer Croc had, the abilities he had. He can swim underwater, and when he's in prison for the first time in Suicide Squad, I really like how he took out some of the guards as well, and he was just a really funny character. I actually do like the one line he says when he's in the bar, I am beautiful. I just laugh at that line. Coming in at number 12 is Joker, Jared Leto's Joker in Suicide Squad. A very controversial casting at the time, Jared Leto is a really fantastic actor. I think he's great in a lot of the movies he's in. But as Joker, it was a very different interpretation. When you're given the tough task of playing a character that's been upheld from the past time, where we've had Heath Ledger, the best Joker in The Dark Knight, then we had Jack Nicholson's Joker from Batman 1989, and Mark Hamill as well. And it's a tough task to go up against those icons. And this Joker was just not Joker to me. This Joker had tattoos, he had a purple jacket on, and he had grills for teeth. I'm like, this is not Joker. And the, when the photos came out that were leaked of him, it's just like, I'm not buying this at all. And Jared Leto is not awful, it's just the Joker, they how they portrayed him is just not Joker to me. Coming in at number 11 is Captain Boomerang, played by Jai Courtney in Suicide Squad. Jai Courtney is the actor that is basically the franchise ruiner. He ruined the Die Hard franchise and the Terminator franchise by playing those characters. And Jack Reacher, kind of, as well. And here, Jai Courtney, is he's actually one of the funniest parts about the film. He's not one of the terrible parts. In here, Captain Boomerang is pretty much the joke box. He throws out jokes here and there. He drinks monster energy drinks. I actually did like the way Jai Courtney brought the character, making it entertaining, not making it forced, and... He was one of the likable members of the Suicide Squad. I kind of like Jai Courtney in this film. Top 10. Coming in at number 10 is going to be El Diablo from Suicide Squad. Now, out of the main members of the Suicide Squad, he was one of the members that got some depth. This guy did have a troubled past. He basically killed his wife and his kid and all that. And it's a really interesting backstory. I really liked El Diablo. Wish they would have fleshed him out more in the film. But his abilities are actually pretty cool, and I would have liked to see him given more things to do. That was one of my issues in Suicide Squad. He was one of my favorite parts about it. I like some of his abilities, and I like some of the things he does. So, he was an entertaining character to me. Coming in at number 9 is going to be Feyora from Man of Steel. General Zod's one-armed general soldier. The scenes where she fights Superman, and she's basically this Kryptonian general soldier who is very loyal to General Zod, and her command and presence on screen is actually really intimidating and intense. I love the scene where she's basically teaching Superman some things. You're Kryptonian, you're weak, and all that. And there's just the scenes where she throws Martha Kent and all that. It's just really cool. And her character brought an intimidating presence to her. I liked her. Coming in at number 8 is Ares, played by David Thewlis in Wonder Woman. Out of all the gods, he's the god of war and the main villain introduced in Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman was a fantastic movie. The movie is only as good as your villain. Well, the movie is good, but the villain was the weakest part. David Thewlis is a really underrated actor. He's fantastic as Professor Lupin in the Harry Potter franchise, but here as Ares, it becomes very generic. I saw the twist coming of him being Ares, the main villain in the movie. You're trying to figure out who Ares is, and this guy just basically want, was looking for Diana the whole time, and he wanted to crush her. The final fight in Wonder Woman is the weakest part to me. It felt very CGI heavy like BVS, like Zack Snyder level. I didn't hate Ares, I didn't hate him like some other villains previous, but David Thewlis does a good job as the character, but just, it becomes very forgettable, generic. Coming in at number 7 is Amanda Waller, played by Viola Davis in Suicide Squad. This character is not perfect at all. She kills people, and Viola Davis does a really good job as Amanda Waller. She's basically like Nick Fury. She brings together all these bad guy super criminals and forms a team in them. Her relationship with Rick Flagg as well is really interesting. 
And I just love the way Viola Davis brought the character. She was really intimidating and all that. And she just does not care. Coming in at number six is Deadshot, played by Will Smith in Suicide Squad. We're almost done with Suicide Squad. Will Smith, I love Will Smith. Everyone loves Will Smith. You don't need to hear it from me. Deadshot was actually really good in this movie. I really liked how they fleshed him out. And his trouble in past with him as a criminal, he has a daughter he has to support, but he can't and all that. I loved how in the film Batman was in it and the way they had those two together. Yep. It was really good and Deadshot was the coolest character by far. He could have worn the mask more. That was my uh, flaw with the movie. That mask was so cool. Top five, coming in at number five is Harley Quinn, played by Margot Robbie in Suicide Squad. Margot Robbie is excellent as Harley Quinn. She's really sexy, really beautiful, and kick-ass. As the character, she brings that charisma, that swagger to her, and she's just so drop-dead gorgeously dangerous. Her relationship with Joker and all that brought an interesting dynamic in Suicide Squad that really fleshed out the character a lot, and Margot Robbie is just beautiful, and she's a great actress, and she was great as Harley Quinn. And now we're getting a a solo Harley Quinn movie, Birds of Prey, coming out. I'm interested to see that. Coming in at number four, these are the DCU villains I actually like now. That's Black Manta from Aquaman. Black Manta is a badass character. Once Black Manta gets really introduced in Aquaman, he does have a pretty tragic backstory. With Aquaman basically leaving his father behind and all that in the ship. They're fighting in the ship and then his father gets left to die and he wants vengeance against Aquaman and wants to kill him. And I thought the actor did a really good job. I forgot his name, Yahalta, he has a long name, but he was excellent as Black Manta. I love his costume design and all that and he was a really cool character. I love the character. Coming in at number three is King Orm from Aquaman, played by Patrick Wilson. Patrick Wilson is really well known from the Conjuring movies. He's worked with James Wan so many times. So obviously you knew Patrick Wilson was going to be cast in this movie. I actually like his backstory and his hatred for Arthur Curry, Aquaman, their brothers. They fought all the time and they fight in this movie. And Orm basically wants to wreck the whole underworld sea of Atlantis and he basically brings hell. And I also really like the end of Aquaman as well with his rebuilding with his mother Atlanta. That was a really interesting dynamic. Coming in at number two is General Zod, played by Michael Shannon in Man of Steel. People call Terrence Stamp the definitive General Zod, but I call Michael Shannon the definitive Zod because it's my Zod. And I thought Michael Shannon was great as General Zod. Such an intimidating, awesome villain. I'm a defender of Man of Steel. I think it is an excellent Superman movie, and it's the best. Zod is a really interesting character. He kills Jor-El, Superman's father, and he wants to collect the Codex so he can bring Krypton back to life. And in order to do that, he has to destroy the entire planet Earth. And the fighting back and forth with Superman and Zod in the final act is so good. Michael Shannon is excellent as Zod. A lot of depth to the character and a lot of great lines. I WILL FIND HIM! Number one. What is my number one? You probably, because you haven't seen it yet, maybe. My number one favorite DCU villain is the villain I just saw tonight. Dr. Zavanna, played by Mark Strong in Shazam. Out of all the DCU villains, they fleshed out a really interesting character in Dr. Savannah. I thought the character was really interesting. I loved how they dived into his backstory, which I won't spoil. And the character brought an intimidating presence to him. He doesn't play around. He's a good match for Shazam. Zachary Levi and Mark Strong's back and forth were really interesting. He's a character that you could definitely see where he's coming from in his ideologies. And I thought he brought a great presence to the film. Mark Strong is an underrated actor and he nailed Dr. Savannah. There you have it guys, that was my ranking for all the DCU villains, all 19 of them. So in the comment section below, what did you guys think of my list and what is your guys list? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you guys as always for watching this ranking and if you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe today for more content. All my social media links are in the description down below. Click that notification bell on your way out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!